Hey everyone, this is just a short video so that I can show you some of the different things that Connect Math may ask. So let's look at transformations of functions uh, 2.6. I realize the problems may be different for me than they are for you, but the technique is the same. So the first three questions are asking you to identify functions by look. Square root. Which one is that? Yes, yay. OK, good. What about cube, the cubic function? Which one? Very good. OK. Um, let's see what's next. Absolute value. Which of these is the absolute value? Very awesome. Okay. Yes, one number A. Okay. The next questions are all transformations. And we're going to use this tool thing here. And that's what I want to show you. So when we're adding or subtracting outside of the function, outside of the parentheses, is that vertical or horizontal? Excellent. Yes, it's vertical. And vertical goes just like it looks. If you're adding four, you go up four. If you subtract three, you go down three. So this is asking us to go up four. I'm going to use this tool that's called the translation tool and just grab the bottom and go up four units and check my answer. Yay. Okay, if we add or subtract inside of the function, inside of parentheses, is that vertical or horizontal? Excellent. That's horizontal. And if it's horizontal, what do we have to do every time? We do the opposite. Very good. So it says x plus 5. We're going to go left 5. I'm just going to grab the graph and make sure that this point that was 0, 0 is really truly at negative 5, 0. And it is, and I think you'll like it. OK. What about this one? We're adding 2. <gasps> We're inside the parentheses. OK, so what does that one mean? Vertical or horizontal? Yes, horizontal. And if we're adding inside the parentheses, that's right, we go left. And I just need to make sure that the point that was at 0, 0 is now at negative 2, 0. And it is. This is so fun. Oh, this one is nice. They want to know the parent function for g of x. g of x is the square root of x plus 1, all minus 3. What could the parent function be? Yes, that's good. So it's the square root function. And we're going for adding inside the function. That's right. We're going to go the opposite. So we're going to go to the left, one unit. And we're going to go down 3. Good. Excuse me. Now, this is really helpful, I think. If we start at 0, 0, on the x, on the x values, we are subtracting 1. And on y, we're subtracting 3. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Now the point is 1, 1. On the x, we're subtracting 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. On the y, we have 1 minus 3. That's negative 2. Now we have the point 9, comma 3. The x, we're subtracting 1. So 9 minus 1 is 8. The y, we're subtracting 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. All right, and now I'm going to do the same thing. 
So I'm, I'm gonna move this horizontally and vertically, and I have points that I can check. So if we're adding inside the function, we go left, so we're left one, and subtract outside the function, down three. And now I've got those points, so I'm gonna use them. Am I beginning at negative one comma negative three? Yes, yay. Is the point zero negative two on the graph? Zero, negative two, it is, yay. And what about eight comma zero? Eight, zero is on the graph. Okay, so when I check my answer, I know that it's correct. One third, and it's multiplied outside the function. So that means I'm gonna multiply all of the y's by one third. So I'm gonna use this tool. It's the vertical stretch or compression tool. And even though I have to hold it down here, I'm gonna look at the point three comma nine, because this is the first time I'm multiplying, or I've got a number that three will go into evenly. So nine times one over three, or nine divided by three is three. I want this value right here to be down here. And I have to look at it from the point of view of this other dot. Three comma three. Okay, now if I check, it should be okay. Oh, hey, this one's fun. So we get to create the graph. That's part of the fun. We're given this strange looking graph, kind of like absolute value. And we want to multiply all of the y's. That's right. All of the y's by three. Well, let's look at what these points are. The point on the very left is negative three comma zero. So what is y? Excellent. Y is zero. What is zero times three? Good. So it, the point will stay negative three, zero. With this kind of activity, it really helps to plot the points first. So I'm gonna plot negative three, zero. Let's look at the other point that's on the x-axis because that also will stay. It, the point is three comma zero there. Again, y is zero. Zero times three stays zero. And finally, we've got this point zero comma three. Y is equal to three. Three times three is excellent. So the point zero three will become zero nine. Now I've got all my points. I'm going to click on this segment tool and click on any of the points and then an adjacent point and click up a segment again, click on this top point and the left is what I did a second. Okay, good. Did that make sense? I hope this is helpful. All right. Oh, good, reflecting. So this time we're reflecting and the negative is inside the parentheses. That's right, it'll be a horizontal translation. So I'm gonna use the reflection across the y-axis, which is the only one that's side to side. And let's see if they like it. They did, yay. This one is fun because we have a graph that's a little bit like absolute value, but we don't know that it's absolute value. We just have a picture of it. Actually, the slope, oh no, it is symmetric. Okay, so we've got a negative inside. Is that a flip side to side or up to down, up to bottom, whatever? Very good. It's the side to side one. So I'm gonna use this reflection across the y-axis tool. Let's see what number 12 has in store for us. Ah, so here in the top one, we have a semicircle or a half circle that is f of x, and they want us to graph negative f of x. Is that a horizontal flip or a vertical flip? Excellent. So I'm going to use the one that looks like it's going up and down, and it's the reflection across the x axis tool. Yay. 
Okay, these are fun. They require a little bit more work. They're giving us f of x is these three line segments. And they want us to plot negative f of x. If we have the negative on the outside of the function, what are we changing the sign of x or y? Excellent. We're changing the signs of all of the y's. So let's do points. We start with negative four comma one. The negative four stays the same, x stays the same. One will become negative one. I always wanna plot the points first on these. Next, we've got a point negative one comma negative two. Negative one will stay because that's x. Negative two will change to positive two. Now I've got two comma negative two. That will become two comma good, positive two. And finally, we've got a point on the x-axis, four comma zero. One of my cats, four comma zero. Y is zero this time. So if we multiply Y by a negative, zero times negative is still zero. So my last point is gonna stay on the X-axis. And now, now that I've got the points, it's easier to do the graph. I'm gonna grab this segment tool, click on one of the points and an adjacent point, segment tool. One of the points, an adjacent point. Adjacent just means next to. Click on the last, in either of the last two points and an adjacent, and you can see that we got it correct. Okay, these, I want you to think of the order of operations for transformations. We always do, if there is one, we always do a horizontal translation first. If we're subtracting six inside the function, is that left and right? Yeah, and do we go left or right if we're subtracting six? Excellent. So I'm going to take my parabola and move it right six units. The next thing I want to do is reflect. So this negative is on the outside of the parentheses. That means it's a vertical reflection. And I'm going to use the reflecting across the x-axis tool. Finally, I'm going to do the vertical translation. That means we're going to add to. And I just grab the, the graph. And it's not too hard to move it. What you have to be careful of is that it stays where you put it. And let's check. Yay. One more. Okay, again, we want to be careful of the order of operations. The first thing we're going to do is shift. That's right. Shift to the right five units. So that's the translation tool. Okay, the second thing we want to do is multiply y. That's right. Multiply y by two. I'm going to use the vertical stretch or compression tool. The point here is six comma one. I'm gonna multiply y by two, so I want it to be six comma two. And the last thing we're gonna do is vertical translation, and we're gonna add three. And this is the point at which I often move it too much in the x direction. So I want it to be at five comma, Three, okay, good, should be fine. I know this is a really short video, but I'm hoping that it was, it'll be helpful to you and um, make this assignment not as bad. Have a great day, I'll see you soon, bye-bye.